Hi there and welcome to this video. Hopefully you're all well and coming towards perhaps the um, end or the tapering of the lockdown that many of us are subject to. Although here in the UK, as I film this, there's talk of a potential quarantine period for anyone coming back into the country. So I think it's going to be quite a long taper with regards to actually traveling a bit further afield. It's always important to look for positive inspiration. And for me, some of the photography that I really like and some of the genres I follow are really travel, food. Um, and that's really slightly difficult during a, this lockdown climate but you still have to dream and plan ahead. So I've been thinking about my bucket lists and it's more than one. Um, I've split them into three photography bucket lists. Um, one that is about the UK, so starting local. So perhaps gradually the, as the lockdown tapers, we can get out and about a bit more in a local context. For some of you, that'll be the US, wherever you're, you're based rather than the UK. Um, I've then got a uh, bucket list which is slightly further afield, it's uh, based around Europe and then I've got a worldwide bucket list and in this video I'm going to focus on the UK one so I'm going to start with the local because that's the most near term um, of the three bucket lists that I've been thinking about. My bucket lists are quite long and large so I'm going to be focusing in on a few of the highlights in this video just to perhaps give you a bit of inspiration but also if you've been to some of these places or you live in some of these places you know to seek your views what, what's great what should I be looking to do when I come to some of these places so this is about the UK in my context, my local environment, and I live about a, an hour out of London. And I've lived around London for most of my life, so I know a lot of um, London. I've travelled around it quite extensively and photographed quite a few um, different locations, some um, sort of hero shots, but also some of the less known areas, like the Columbia Road Flower Market. Um, which only happens on a Sunday morning and you've got to get there quite early to get the really good shots. So London is a very diverse, quite a big city, 8 million people um, and it's got lots of areas, as I say, some of the hero areas but then there are really interesting areas that you only get to know if you've explored or if you've got the inside track. One of the things I had recommended to me recently was a great book by George Johnson, Photographing London. And in this, George, who's lived in and around London for most of his life, has actually found all of the different areas. He's got his own photos through here of different locations. He highlights viewpoints and it's a real bargain at £25. Um, so I'll put the link below. Um, it's, you know, as I say, it's a great Bible for finding those less well-known areas. There are areas in here that I didn't even know existed um, and that's what I'm going to be looking for as we come out of lockdown. Now I live south of London, some of my videos have been um, on the North Downs so I'm going to be going a bit further afield on the North Downs but also along the south coast of the UK along the English Channel. Um, most of my travel has been towards the west and I haven't really traveled the um, East Sussex and Kent south coasts. So you've got things like Beachy Head, you've got um, Berlin Gap, Seven Sisters, the White Cliffs of Dover. So actually doing some walks along there will be um, on my bucket list for the, the more immediate, more local opportunities as we come out of lockdown. The second category is slightly further afield, so it's going to take perhaps a weekend break. It's probably a four hour drive for me. And there are many areas that fit into this, but I've highlighted one area which I, you know, I really like. Um, when I was growing up as a child, I used to holiday in South Devon every summer because that's where my grandparents lived. And we used to, you know, go to the beach and do all the kind of things you do as a family holiday. And South Devon's beautiful from that perspective called the English Riviera. Um, however, from a photography perspective, there are some really nice areas, um, but it's probably less well known for photography than perhaps Dartmoor and Exmoor, the moorlands as you go a bit further north inland, and then the North Devon coast. And we went to the North Devon coast about a year and a half ago for a week. We rented a cottage there and it's far more rugged, far more rocky there, but you've got some great inlets with some beautiful beaches. 
Um, I'll show you a few of the photos I got from there, but it's a great place you can go perhaps out of season rather than in season. So we went around about October time. There was a lot less traffic on the road. We had some great sunsets and great weather, um, but a lot less people on the beaches. So you could really get into and immerse yourself. You know, I can quite easily spend a whole morning or a day on a beach just looking around if there's rock pools, rock formations. As the tide comes in and goes out, you can adjust the genre where you shoot from big landscapes and panoramas down to really you know macro intimate um, beach photography where you're looking at the rock pools and some of the wildlife and some of the patterns in the sand so you know I really like Devon and it you know it links quite neatly that north coast down into Cornwall as well which is beautiful um, from a you know, north coast again is very rocky it's hit by the Atlantic swell um, so lots of different rock formations and on the south side again still rocky but some really beautiful beaches so always something to do in Devon and Cornwall um, as I said my last um, trip we covered the coast from Woolacombe down to Bude around the Cornish border and I'll definitely go back there I definitely recommend it so that's on my bucket list to perhaps do a bit of coastal combined with the moorland and it's not an area you've got to go as I say in the peak summer season it can be something you go out of season Dartmoor in the winter is really quite misty and you know really atmospheric so don't limit yourself to just going when the holiday brochure pictures are are there of the blue skies and you know beautiful beaches there really is you know the, in that area a lot to do for me so hence why it's on my bucket list and even though I've been there many times I'll be going back there the third category for me is um, the big one. It's much further afield. It's um, a real project and therefore it's more longer term. It's going to take more planning and it may well take multiple trips. And there are many, um, as I said, my bucket list is quite long. We've got things like Northumberland, Snowdonia, the Peak District, real beautiful areas in the UK. But the one that really um, for me is unexplored today is Scotland. I've got relatives who live in Scotland. I've been to Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen um, uh, many times on business and also for pleasure. Um, but out outside of the cities, um, my exploration has been really limited and that's an area I really want to address. Um, my first focus from the research I've been doing during lockdown is really perhaps focusing on sky. Um, quite a big island off the west coast of Scotland beautiful scenery and so much to do from walking, hiking, climbing, some beaches, um, some inland areas, real, you know, real depth of opportunities from a photography perspective. Now there are other islands in the Inner Hebrides that I'm really interested in, Jura, Isle, Barra, um, but really Sky has quite a bit that you can do and would be a great starting point for me. As I say, for me, it's about multiple trips, perhaps at multiple times of the year as well, because, you know, the, the weather is, is really diverse when you look at somewhere like Scotland. That's part of the research I've got to do and be you know, honest with myself about what can I achieve in perhaps one or two weeks um, in a location when you're at the whims of the British weather. For me, it's um, a bit of a challenge because these longer term trips, you know, I've got a couple of options. For me, driving to Sky is about 12 hours and therefore you've probably got to break it. So it's going to be, you know, sort of a one, two day trip each way. And maybe I can wind in Northumberland one way and Lake District on the other way. So I can make it a, a bigger road trip type approach. The second option is to either fly to Inverness and hire a car or get the overnight sleeper up to Scotland and then hire a car. So I've got many different options and planning how I look to do different times of the year with different options may be, a, may be an opportunity. Um, but it takes a lot more planning and a lot more investment. Um, but that's what makes it a real opportunity and why during this lockdown time I've been looking at some of these and trying to plan and pre-plan and look at what are the opportunities when I've got a bit more time to really put in the planning you know I did a video recently on my trip to Lisbon and how that was really a planning trip for a future trip so I'll put a link above um, for you to go to there about some of the things I'm doing in my planning phase 
As I said, it's, it's great to do the desk-based research, but I know some of you will live in Scotland, some of you will have been to Sky. What are your thoughts? Where should I be looking? What are the things that you've been there that hit the mark where things you want to spend more time or go at a different time of year? What are the things that you perhaps went to but didn't live up to expectations because the weather wasn't right, it wasn't the right time of year? So do leave your ideas in the comments below. It'd be great to hear your thoughts. I'd love to learn from your experiences. Um, I'd also be interested in hearing where, what's on your local bucket list. It doesn't matter whether it's in the UK, the US, somewhere else in the world. It'd be great to hear what's on, on there because I'm going to be doing a series of videos, one looking at Europe and one looking at worldwide. So again, I'm yeah, really keen to learn from your experiences. So do leave some comments below. It'd be great to hear your thoughts. I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, as always, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified of the future videos. I do hope you're keeping safe and well and you're developing your bucket lists for when we all come out of this challenging time. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you in a future video.